Welcome back to the second episode of my little masterclass here with Nanlite. Just to recap what we did previously, we looked at the different color settings that we can use. And on this episode, I want to just show you how we can control light even more precisely. Today we'll be working with the projector attachment for the Forza 60. So with the projector attachment, we are basically able to create very specific shapes of light. We're able to play around with different goggle filters. Instead of having the, the lights now just on a hue loop, I'm just gonna keep it to one color. So I've set the two lights in the back just on the same color and I've brought down the brightness a little bit. So it kind of just reads as a dark blue background. The good thing about using the power tubes on a white background is that you're able to kind of create your own custom backdrop. So I've set up two Forza 60s with a projector attachment each. So if I turn the light on now in the Nanlink app, you can see now we get this cool red light. And then we can also turn on the second one. And then we've got a little vertical slit going here. So the cool thing with the projector attachments is that they have these blades that allow us to kind of like adjust the width of the light. So you see I can open it up and I can kind of create like a wider shot or I can like close them in. And then you can also control the focus. So if you want it to be a bit blurrier, you can like drag it out a bit. So the one thing about using a projector attachment is that everything is kind of reversed. So you have to kind of think backwards how you adjust them. So now we've got like this line going across his face like that. Let's take a little uh, test a shot. Little a bit. As we can see now, we've got more control of the light. In the previous episode, we had the Fresno lens and even with the Fresno lens and the barn doors, it was hard to kind of get a very like sharp shadow. But here now, because we have the projection attachments, we're able to get a really nice and sharp, crisp shadow. And now I'm happy with the shape of the light. I'm gonna try and play around a bit, put both of these uh, 60Cs on a hue loop as well. And then we're gonna see like how the two different lines are changing color. So we have two different colors now going in different directions. Let's just throw in 30X and the 15X as well, just so we have a bit more colors to play around with. Yeah, hold that, great. So the filter we've put now in the projector attachment is called a gobo, and it means go between optics. And basically what it allows us to do is to kind of replicate like real life shadows. So for example, here we see like the Venetian blinds in the back. That looks really cool, nice. So right now I'm shooting, uh, I'm using an 85 mil and I'm shooting on 2.8. The reason why I'm shooting on 2.8 is just because I want there to be some sharpness in his hair. Also, if, if, I, if I go any wider on the aperture, there's a chance we might not get his eyes in focus. So right now the shutter speed I've got is 125. And the reason why I'm shooting with 125 is for me, pretty confident that I can hold my camera still enough for the image not to have any like motion blur to it. If I go any slower with it, then I, I would have to shoot it on a tripod. And I think I really like the way everything is looking now with Aaron. That's what I like with the hue effect mode is that we're able to rotate all these different colors. So now we have the colors changing on the background. We have the color changing as the rim light on Aaron. And we have that line going across Aaron's face. So we're able to kind of get all these different nice options in just one setting rather than having to like run between the lights, changing gels, and then spending lots of time trying to figure out the right color when you kind of just like, you're able to record all these different color options. And then at the end of the day, you can just select the different, the best color setup from the shoot. So you see now we've been kind of building on top. And then we also have like the little blur as well from the um, split diopter in front of my lens. So now that we've had a little look at how we can use the projector attachments for the 60C, I thought it would be fun to play around a bit with the projector. So this is a digital projector and it's actually one of the, like the first lights that I got a few years ago before I even like knew about Nanlite. And uh, it is what I kind of used to get myself started with experimenting with color. I bought it on Amazon for like 60 pounds. And yeah, because of this guy, I was actually able to create uh, exciting work that gave me enough confidence to like get in touch with Nanlite. And I am here I am now because of this one. Because of the lumen not being bright enough, I need to kind of adjust the other lights accordingly. Um, when you're working with projectors, you should always try and 
build your lights around the weakest light you have because if you turn on all of your strongest lights and have them on the strongest your weakest light won't be able to read so it's much better to start with the weakest light you have you build on top of it with the other lights and then you just see how strong you need to make the settings and i'm going to move it so that it doesn't project onto the backdrop i just want it to project onto aaron and get some cool shots now with Aaron like that. And then now let me add Pavos in the back. On the previous setup, I had all of the lights set to 100%. Uh, the digital projector, which is quite weak, I had to basically bring all of the lights down to 1%. And now I'm also shooting on a tripod on ISO 400 and the, the shutter speed has gone from 125th of a second to a 60th of a second. So in this episode, we've looked at how we can play with the power tubes together with the projector attachments. And in addition to the 60Cs and the projector attachments, I also showed you just a little bit of how we can play with a digital projector. And uh, in the end of the day, it's all just about having fun with color. Stay tuned for the next episode when we will be playing with uh, haze to add a bit of texture into our photographs and also how to kind of make it feel a bit more cinematic.